Hello and welcome to the Cardiac Cats YouTube channel. I'm your host, Jacob Shorba, and today we're talking about Calais Campbell and his potential reunion with the Jacksonville Jaguars this upcoming season. So with that awesome intro said, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So this has got to be, I think, out of all the news this offseason, probably the most exciting news. And obviously he's not signed officially. This still has development. He could go to another team. But even considering Darius Slay, who I think would have been a fantastic addition to this team, considering salary cap, all these important things, I think Calais Campbell could very much be that number one story of the offseason for Jacksonville and the coolest one for the team. Now, might be some extreme bias there, right? But that's just how I feel about it. So we're going to talk about really his career in Jacksonville, we're going to talk about how he's played with Baltimore, really the kind of player he is right now. We'll even go into some of the history with him and the Jaguars before he played for the team and talk about you know how this looks for them. Are they going to be able to get him? Who are their competitors for him? Does it really make sense? And so let's go ahead and get started in that. So Calais Campbell played for the Jaguars for three seasons. So we look at his career down here. He was drafted by Arizona uh, in 2008, and he played for them for about nine seasons, ended up hitting free agency finally, came to Jacksonville, and in 2017 had his biggest season as a player, the most dominant year that he's had. 17 sacks on the season. I think there's a legit argument that you can make for Calais Campbell being the biggest part of that defense that year. I think especially from a mentality standpoint, from how he functions as a leader for a team, I think he was the number one guy on that unit. Just my personal opinion. You can make arguments as well for guys like Jalen Ramsey. You know, the, obviously a fantastic cornerback, but Calais Campbell in his own right, it's one of the best defensive ends that season. He was dominant. And we saw him continue to play that way with Jacksonville. I think you can make a very strong argument that where he's seen the most success has been in Jacksonville, playing for this team. So he played here for three seasons, uh, played through into the AFC Championship, huge part of the team getting that far, uh, stuck around 2018 when things went south, and stayed around during the uh, Gardner Minshew rookie season, and ended up being traded after that. And... A lot of the reason why he was traded was because, you know, as you get older as a football player, you haven't won a Super Bowl and, you know, you've played for a couple teams at that point. What you want to do is you want to go win a Super Bowl. And unfortunately, as much as Campbell wanted to do that with Jacksonville, this team just wasn't going to win one anytime soon. You know, they had to rebuild. They had to go through a process. And thankfully for us, they really went through that process about perfect. I mean, they land a fantastic quarterback, someone who could be the best in the NFL, has every bit of potential to become that. They got a fantastic head coach right now. I mean, things have worked out really well, but that took time. You know, that took three years for us to be in this position. And so they ended up trading him to Baltimore before the 2020 season, ended up doing it for a small amount of draft capital because they wanted Campbell to be able to choose what franchise he wanted to play for. He chose Baltimore, felt like they were one of the best teams, felt like they were a team on the up and up. And so Jacksonville ended up only getting a fifth rounder in return. Now at the time, like I was really frustrated as a fan seeing that because for one, I didn't want Calais to go anywhere. He is a player I wanted to stick around the rest of his career here. And I still feel that way today, like a lot of fans. Um, I also thought, Getting a fifth rounder was just ridiculous for him. He's a way more valuable player. But here's why that matters now is because since they gave him the option to go wherever he wanted, to not essentially just choose whoever threw the most at him, which could have been a team that wasn't good at the time, I think Calais and his relationship with Jacksonville is a lot stronger for that. And if they hadn't done that, I'm not sure we could have this conversation right now. I'm not sure we could consider him coming back to Jacksonville at this point because that could have burned bridges. That could have really messed up that relationship. And so that's really important. 
at this point. I think it makes a strong argument for why you consider the player in those negotiations. And sometimes you let them go to the team they want to go to. I think it also ends up being more attractive to other players, to your organization. So all things to consider with uh, Campbell's time here, you know, really how he came in, how he left. And he's a guy who loved being in Jacksonville, did a lot for the community. He's not just a great football player or, you know, was a great football player. He's still really good, but obviously he's 36 now. He's an older guy. But as a person, this is the kind of person that you want representing your franchise, that you want representing your city. I think that's one thing that Jacksonville has just completely flipped the last couple years because they went from a team that had a lot of, I would say, bad eggs or very close to being that kind of players to being one of the easiest teams to root for in the league. I mean, you just look at the roster, you look at the kind of guys they have here and the way they value this team, they value football, and all of that, I think, makes it so easy to root for them and has honestly helped our fan base. Like, we have a great group of fans right now because I think for a lot of fan bases, they end up taking on the image of the team, the way the players act, and... You know, I see that a lot with how Jacksonville acts right now, especially comparing it to 2017, where things were a lot different. And so, not to get on too much of a side tangent, just some thoughts on that, but Campbell was a great person to represent this franchise. And obviously, things have changed, right? I mean, he's three years farther along in his career, and it's going to impact the amount he's paid. We're not talking about paying him $20 million a year or signing a mega contract or having him for four seasons. You know, this is talking about bringing him back to finish his career here on a deal that's going to be affordable. On one of those deals you sign with a player who cares more about winning a Super Bowl than getting the most money. So, talking about his time in Baltimore. Despite having a downturn in his sack production, as you can see, Technically, every year with Jacksonville went down a bit. Um, also got to consider that really the pieces on defense ended up declining. He had a lot of guys leave and it ended up being a really different team. But when he went to Baltimore, he had a couple rough seasons. Not a ton of production, but this last year, it says six year, but he had five and a half sacks. And you got to keep in mind, this is with a rotational role. Ever since he left Jacksonville, that's really how he's played. He's not been an every-down guy. And that's not really necessarily even what Jacksonville's looking for in a pass rusher or a run defender because he really doubles his both. Uh, he's still a very balanced defensive player. You know, like we're talking about here, he's not just going to come on for passing downs. He can stop the run. He can really do everything you're going to ask for a guy on the defensive line I mean, we can look, for example, at where he's lined up for Baltimore. You'll see he's lined up really all over the place. You know, you see a lot of snaps on the inside. We also see him out at left end. He can also play right end. You can see all of that, and you're not afraid to place him wherever you need to on the defensive line. So you got to get a flexible player and someone who can really do anything you ask. So you're not worried if you think, oh, it's going to be a run play, and he ends up passing it. Because you know Clayus Campbell can play against that. So, all important stuff with him. Now, talking about his impact at this point, you know, we, we discuss all that. But not only is he a vital leader too, he's also a clutch player. So, if you remember this last year, Clayus Campbell came back to Jacksonville with Baltimore. They played him in Week 12, and that was the first big game for this team where they had that last second comeback. And obviously, you know, they came back against the Raiders, but they took the lead with a decent amount of time left. It didn't necessarily come down to the very last second. The Baltimore game was the one where we saw this team pulled off in crazy fashion. And, you know, there was a play where Campbell nearly cost Jacksonville the game. You know, nearly won it for Baltimore. It's a play. I was on the final drive for Jacksonville. They were down 27 to 20 and Campbell ended up getting a sack causing a fumble and it was recovered by Jacksonville. It was also questionable whether it was a fumble, but you see him step up in those moments. We saw it as well when he was here. That's the kind of player he is. 
He's a guy who's going to win you games. He's going to be that big play guy. And that's everything you can ask for from a rotational guy. So for that kind of role, which is what Jacksonville's looking for, he's a perfect fit. And while this team does have veterans who are leaders on the defense, I would argue they don't have one like Calais Campbell because y- you ultimately you get these veterans that are, you know, maybe say five or six years into their career, right? They're leaders. They can help with that. They have experience. But Campbell's been around, you know, gosh, at this point, you see he's drafted in 2008. Would this be a 16th season? I mean, he's been around the NFL for a long time. He knows the ropes. He knows Jacksonville. And I think immediately coming on this team, even though he's a rotational guy, he could end up being someone who could become one of the top leaders on the defense. I would actually say at least I think he'll be that. May not be the top guy, but he's going to be one of them. So, you know, important things to consider. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about how this impacts the cap. I think that's important to discuss. So we'll look at over the cap, kind of analyze Jacksonville's situation. Now we've got a few things that have not happened yet on here because we haven't got details. The three signings that the team had externally, it was uh, Henry Mondo, Michael Dogby, and Duranis Johnson. They are not factored in here. However, I don't think it's going to impact the cap much because we're talking about running back who's playing either second or third string, which I think he's going to be a very valuable guy for that, but he's still not going to earn a ton of money or anything. And then you're talking about two guys that are probably going to be closer to veteran minimum. So maybe this number is like eight to nine million. Now you need to save 3.1 for this team to be good with the draft. That's what the effectively we're going to see change. So you probably got about $5 million to spend. If you want to bring Campo in on a one-year deal, I think you can get it done for $5 million or less. That would be my expectation. We consider, for, for example, what Baltimore was set to pay him before this. When they cut him, they saved $7 million. That's effectively their choice. They have to determine whether he's worth $7 million or not. And ultimately, they didn't feel like that. Now, I would pay him that. As Jacksonville, it'd probably be on the higher end of what I'd want to do, but I don't think they're going to have to pay that much money. You know, we were talking about Baltimore originally still being a part of this, still being a team he could go back to, and that was not ruled out at first. They thought that he could end up just signing back on a cheaper deal. And we've also seen, for example, Jacksonville has used, has, sorry, has used void years. So, they can spread out that cap hit. Doesn't have to be just this season either. So I think he's affordable. That's going to be your first important part. I think you'll also see him potentially decline a bigger contract to go to a team that's going to be competitive and has a shot to win a Super Bowl. Now, there's a few competitors that we've got in the mix. There's four other teams that he's going to meet with or has already met with. I believe all of this will have taken place this last week and for this week. So the two teams we know he's already met with at this point are the Atlanta Falcons, his first visit, and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, out of those two, I think it's very clear as day, Jacksonville's a bigger competitor right now. Atlanta has quarterback issues. They didn't win their division. They were the first team eliminated from the playoffs in their division, And that was the weakest division in football, arguably. You know, maybe you argue the AFC South was, but I think, like, you look at both of those, Jacksonville was clearly clearly the best team out of all of them and was just a team that got going later in the season, had to come back from a big deficit they had early on. So I think you compare those, obviously Jacksonville's the top, but you get some other competitive teams in here. Talking about the Buffalo Bills. Talking about the Detroit Lions, and the New York Jets. The last two, maybe a couple years ago, won't be on that list as competitive teams, but they're both on the up and up. We see Detroit going 9-8 and last year, nearly making the playoffs, and I think this year there's an argument that they're the most likely team to go win their division, and they've got a shot to make a deep playoff run. Now, I don't know if they're going to go from missing the playoffs to winning a Super Bowl, 
I don't know if they're better than Jacksonville this next year. Obviously, they you know, beat the crap out of them last season. But I think overall, as far as the whole schedule, playing out the whole season and examining all that, I still think Jacksonville is a better team. It's debatable. But they have a better shot at going deeper in the playoffs and going all the way. You know, more things are, are looking up in that regard. And then you talk about the New York Jets currently don't have Aaron Rodgers. That has not been worked out yet. And they just went 7-10. and 10. They've still got to prove that they can go make the playoffs. They didn't do it last year. Like Detroit, but they were farther off. They had a losing record. And they're in a very tough division. I don't think they're going to win that division this next year. Especially seeing Miami load up and get better. And then, you know, Buffalo is still competitive. Which is our last team we'll talk about. While I say Buffalo is competitive, I don't think they're going to come back as strong as they did this last year. And quite frankly, there's no evidence for this, right? But this is just a hunch I have. I'm not sure if Stefan Diggs sticks around there or ends up having a really good season next year. I think there's clearly problems there. The way he stormed out of the locker room after their loss. The team's just broken right now. As far as I see it, and I think a lot of people would feel the same about just how they generally feel towards the Buffalo Bills. You know, even with the Hamlin injury, last year was their season. If they were going to win the Super Bowl, that was the year. And they didn't even get to the AFC Championship. So I think out of this list, I'm obviously biased, right? I'm a Jaguars fan. I'm going to say they're the best. But I do think there's a legitimate argument for Jacksonville to be the best. And I think that's the most logical outcome of that whole argument, of this whole debate. I think there's a good chance that Calais Campbell sees it the same way. I think there's a good chance that the familiarity in Jacksonville, seeing how the organization turned around, what they're coming off of this last season, their quarterback, and he saw this in person. Keep that in mind. Because he played in Jacksonville. He watched this team turn around live. I think that's going to impact his decision, and I'm hoping that causes him to come back here. And really, as a fan, this is one of the moves I wanted. There may have been other guys that I thought might have a bigger impact this offseason. You know, I was big on getting Sean Murphy Bunning in here. Thought he might be a good corner. Not necessarily better than what Calais Campbell would offer, but still a very important piece. Uh, Justin Houston's another guy still on the market. Definitely want to bring him in. I think he would be valuable to the team. Um, you've got other guys you could talk about. Isaac Sumalo. But a lot of these guys have been signed at this point. Things have changed. And if there was any story that was going to be great for Jacksonville this offseason and made a lot of sense for the organization, it's bringing in Calais Campbell. And just talking about the history between him and this organization... You know, it's been it's been a bit checkered. Originally, Campbell talked about before the NFL draft, Jacksonville told him that if he was available at their selection, they were going to take him. They were going to pick him up. You know, there's a timeline where he's been a Jacksonville Jaguar pretty much his entire career. However, they skipped out on him, chosen their player, and he ended up going to Arizona after that. Had a really good career there. But he finally came back to Jacksonville. Seemed like they were going to go win the Super Bowl together. And then, what do you know? Miles Jack gets called down and the team ends up losing. It sucked. Sucked a lot. And he ended up parting ways. Kind of figured things were over at that point. But Jacksonville's turned around. Campbell wants to win a Super Bowl. What story would be better than a guy like him that has meant so much to this organization has been as much of a leader as he has been, and an influence on the community, and, a, and most importantly, a great football player throughout his career. That guy coming back here in a season where Jacksonville is primed to go deep in the playoffs again and maybe even win the Super Bowl, can you imagine what it would be like if he won the Super Bowl with this team? I would be so elated to be able to see that. I think he deserves nothing less and if this team's going to make a run, I want him to be a part of it. It ain't going to break the bank. It's not going to do anything to hurt this team. It is a win scenario 
for this team to bring him in. And so I hope that happens. I hope that he finishes his career, his career here. I hope this team wins the Super Bowl before he retires. I think it's very much possible that we see all of this play out. But right now we're crossing our fingers. We're waiting for this week to go by. We're waiting for him to talk to other organizations. Important things to throw in here that I did not yet. Jacksonville did talk about today, and this is uh, Trent Balky and Doug Pearson talking about this, and I'm also recording this on Monday. So this is the day before this video gets released. They did say they're going to have a conversation with him again once he's visited with all these teams. So it will not officially be over after those visits are done. They're not done talking to him. I think there's a shot that Jacksonville gets the opportunity to counter whatever offer Calais is leaning towards, if he's leaning towards another team. I think there's a legit shot there. And I do genuinely believe right now that out of all the five options, that Jacksonville is the clear front runner. I, I really think they are. I think this team made it very clear they want him. They want him to be a part of that defense. He's a guy who will upgrade you over Arden Key. He will play better. He played better his entire career. Played better last year. He's not going to just go leave for a division rival either. And he's going to stick around. So, I hope it happens. Don't want to keep rambling too much, but now you know how I feel about this. I wanted to make a video early on about it, but it's just been a lot of moving pieces with it. We thought maybe he was going to get signed originally, so I didn't put anything out because I figured, well, he'll probably get signed right after that. And then they end up visiting with other teams. Seemed like it was going to get drawn out. Now we know a little more. They finally talked about it uh, with the media today. And so, you know, now it's time to finally discuss this. So thank you guys for watching. Appreciate your time. Um, hope we get more videos out here soon. Just hasn't been a ton to talk about other than this really, but we've got the draft coming up. It's going to be exciting. I'll be out there. Hopefully get some stuff recorded there. And uh, obviously just talking about what happened at the draft. Still got exciting stuff coming up. So with that all said, appreciate it. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And finally, go Jags.